Welcome everyone to Angels Landing Spiritual Center Virtual Gathering. Let us set our intention in this present moment and in this space. Coming together today, we create a collective divine heartbeat. We affirm truth and peace abide here. We gather to remember and recognize the divine mystery within. In our sacred circle, we honor the awakening of each spirit who enters. Let us pray. A prayer by Jeannie Hube. Mother, father, grandmother, grandfather of the open endless sky, your names are whole and complete. I invite your totality, knowing that your will is done on and above the earth. Feed to me, <clears throat> feed me today and give to me even when I fail to live up to my values. Help me to let others live their lives and express their values without interference from me. Keep me from being tempted to hurt myself and others, mostly by errors in my thinking. Prove to me my original integrity. Your way is peaceful, joyful, and glorious, now and forever. Amen. There is 
Only love. Beautiful song. Thank you, Lori and John. Um, I'm coming to you guys from a different place today, uh, live out at our farm near Bucyrus, Ohio. It's actually um, my in-laws farm and it's a beautiful place for retreat. And um, we don't have the rain. It came through uh, I think not last night, but the night before. And so we have this glorious um, glorious weather today. I'm looking out the windows and uh, I tried setting up actually to share the beautiful um, water farm and woods with you and the light was actually just too bright and it slowed down my feed. So I moved in here to being in front of our fireplace here. Um, so yes, good morning. Let's all check in for a minute, okay? Just Take a deep breath, whether you were rushing to get here, whether you're just listening and doing something else, you know, wherever you are right now, whatever the weather is around you, just take a minute to check in and figure out what's the weather inside of you right now. How are you feeling? Where's your head at? Where's your heart at? Are you present? Are you somewhere else? And just kind of tap in for a minute. I want to listen to Last Sue again. We started our chakra series <clears throat> with this quote, and I think today as I summarize everything and we kind of cap off this work that we've been doing, it's great to revisit where we started. If you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself, truly. The greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. And so with that, today we're going to look at where we've been for the last, uh, well, it's been a little more than seven weeks, um, but where we've been in this journey of our chakras on that spiritual level, what kind of healing we've done, what's still there, what's still calling us in. And how can we take this work forward in our lives so that it's not just something we heard, but it's something that touches us and stays with us. Um, but today, especially since I'm out at the farm, uh, I do want to have all of us recognize and call in the four directions and our ancestors. So let's see here. Make sure I get the right end of the smudge stick. some sage going here. Let it energetic, energetically come through to everybody. Okay, so with that, <clears throat> we call in the spirits and the guides of the east where the sun rises. Help us see clearly and give light to everything we hold in shadow. We call in the spirits and the guides of the South. We call in transformational medicine from snake that we may always see the authentic divine truth outside of our egos. We call in the spirits and the guides of the West. Bring us the introspection we need, the wisdom for healing and transformation. We call in the spirits and the guides of the North, bringing in our ancestors, tapping into our cellular vibration, tapping into all the energy that runs through our body. Bring us that wisdom of generations to know how to move in the world, especially in our relationships. 
We call in the healing power of Mother Earth and Great Spirit to guide us and center us in the work we do today. Oh. <clears throat> so our four agreements that we kind of give ourselves the framework that we set into, we make a commitment to bring a pure heart with pure intention, seek truth in ourselves, that authentic, truth, that divine truth from source. We make no assumptions based on our old belief systems. We see what those old beliefs are. We let them dissolve. And we take nothing personally. So as things come up, we don't need to engage our emotions. We can see what emotion we might be feeling, but we maintain that observance. So that helps us see things from a place of equanimity so that we're not going personally into it and causing more harm. Carolyn May says that theology is no longer in a building. And we have that right here in our virtual world, right? But today we go back into our body, ourselves, as we are all connected in the circle. We are connected with all that is, we are all one. But we're gonna really go into ourselves because the theology that we're looking for is actually in our blood and in our bones. It's in our body. And that's what we can transform today through working with our chakras. So let's do a little bit of a summary. Most of the chakra work um, that we've gone through because we've been dealing with the spiritual aspect of chakra as opposed to um, uh, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of it all, the colors, you know, the um, places. We've talked a little bit about this, but we've really been looking at spiritual transformation. Um, and if you're really interested in more of this, I want to note that a lot of the work um, that I've been uh, sharing with you comes from the sources of Carolyn Mace. I think her, her work with uh, Sacred Truth is very powerful, um, and Margot Anand. So those, and, and several other sources um, that I've learned for the last 25 years and have tapped into online. But those two, um, those two particular authors are notable and I wanna give credit there. Um, so that if you wanna dive into this more, those would be two people to look up, okay? So the chakras give us an invitation. <clears throat> they invite us to come and find the quiet center. They help us find room to hope, room for faith, room for trust. These are places that when we do this transformational work, we're setting the intention of creating space for those things in our lives. And when we create the space for those and we grow our faith and our hope and our love and our trust, uh, we build that connection to all that is greater than us and we really tap into that oneness in the web of it all, okay? So that's part of the benefit of doing this. We find freedom, freedom to move energetically through ourselves in the world without getting trapped in our shadows. So that's part of the benefit of this as long as, uh, as well as opening up. And when we open up, it's not just, we don't, our intention isn't just to open up to what is good. It's also to open up to the pain and the discomfort for ourselves as well as for each other. So to sit with another person's pain and discomfort is a very sacred act. And so when we're doing this work, especially in a circle that we have, even virtual, what we're really doing is holding space for all that discomforting, uncomforting, um, disrupting kind of emotions to surface. <clears throat> Excuse me, so that we can really tap in to how we can release that. And when we release that, we lift, our vibration goes up, our frequency goes up, and we're able to kind of pull ourselves up into the blueprint of our greatest selves so that we can be in that space where I am coming into this world as the best possible me I can offer. Okay, so letting our love unravel, as the song says, letting our fears unravel, letting it all open and finding that freedom. So let's go through these chakras. Let's recap 
and bring it all together. Okay, so this isn't just a reminder. We're sewing, we're sewing them all together now. Okay, so the first chakra, our root chakra, down between our legs, opening downward into Mother Earth. The truth there is all is one. That's our tribe. That's where we tap into all is one. The two leggeds, the four leggeds, nature, each other, all of us together. This is our tribe and we are part of it. Okay, so we need to shed our survival mode. We shed feeling like we don't belong. We let go of, you know, all of that discomfort of feeling separate from everything. And we invite in the connectedness to life. We invite that in. We feel that. We feel the tribe of energy and life that we're a part of. We're also a part of death. We're also a part of the entire cycle the entire sacred circle, the mandala that we go around, okay, the medicine wheel, all of those things. We're a part of it, and we fall into different places, and that's what makes us different from everybody is where we fall in that. But we and our, of our own divinity are one. So every choice you make and every belief you hold exerts influence upon that whole of life. Okay, so that's why we pay attention. That's where we bring our thoughts and our feelings. And then we move up into chakra two. And that's about other. So we go tribe, and then we go to other. And other is about honoring each other. Honoring the one-on-one. -on -one, honoring our individual relationships, okay? We need to overcome the challenge of grasping here. Where we want to hold tight. Hold everything with that open hand. Let go of the grasping, let go of the need for things. Understand the release is what brings the freedom. Uh, this is also a place we heal shame. We let go of that. We don't grasp our discomfort, shame, regret, those kinds of things. We open that up. We let it transform. Every relationship that you develop, from casual to intimate, helps you become more conscious if you're open and willing to look at what the gift is of each relationship. So there can be no union, no heart to heart, soul to soul, spirit to spirit, connection with people without bringing sp spiritual virtue to it. This is all in that second chakra. It's where our spiritual virtue is, okay? So then we move up into that third chakra, the solar plexus. It's kind of, you know, when we're doing that hourglass, hourglass shape in these, so it's like broad tribe, then other, and now we're into that solar plexus. And that solar plexus is the heart of our power. And this is about self, okay? This is a deep awareness of self in the world. So who you are to the whole. You have tribe, you have relationships and other, and then you have self in the world. So this is where we shed our self-inflicted wounds, especially the ones that we get the stories going from everything outside. We think the world is telling us about us. This is where we misinterpret. This is the space of woundology where we wound ourselves with the way that we process things. We can do a lot of damage to ourselves here. And this is where, you know, um, uh, Carolyn Mace puts it really well. Uh, pain has privilege in the third chakra. Pain has privilege. And we want to get rid of that. So we often hold on to our pains and our stories that we tell. This is where, you know, the archetype of being a martyr or being a victim comes in. And this is the space we heal it in, in that third chakra, where we say, this no longer is serving my higher power, my highest good. And so we let this go. This is where not taking it personal comes in, right? So in that space, we need to dismiss the darkness we feed ourselves with truth. And it's the truth that's sometimes hard to face, but it's the, it's the divine truth. It's the authentic truth. It's the truth without stories attached to it, okay? And we can really zero in and look there, and it brings us freedom. And so we confront our fears and we confront, you know, where we uh, serve our fears and we let that go. So being mature, 
stepping into that space, being honorable in the relationship you have with yourself, recognizing your worthiness. This is where this is in the third chakra. Recognizing your worthiness to be in this world because you are part of the whole. You are divine reflection. You accept responsibility for the person that you are becoming, who you've become. You accept all responsibility for what's happened to you and your story up until now. And then you release the story and you are without it. You are of greater potential without it. So from that third chakra, we rise up into the fourth, okay? And this space is the heart space between our external world and our internal world. So our fourth chakra, sacred truth, is that love is our divine power. It's our superpower. And we have a birthright to it. Okay? So that love being divine power is like the seed of our spirit. It's, the, it's where we get divine grace streaming through us. And this is the space that radiates out both to our outer world and our inner world that can heal all things. This goes back to Lori and John's first song. This love is the greatest power. And, you know, I mean, to a lot of people, that sounds corny. Uh, you know, if you're part of the hippie generation, you've been, you know, buying into this philosophy for a long time. Uh, if you're younger, you're, you're kind of like, eh. <laughs> and I just, I challenge you to seek out why you might go, eh, or that's kind of cheesy, or you know, whatever it is that you're, you might be pulling away from this idea of love being divine power. Yeah, it sounds fluffy. It sounds like, oh yeah, this is what so many songs are about. This is, you know, why I avoid church or whatever it is. But the the thing of it is, is that you need to explore what is it inside of you. There's a truth there. Maybe you use different words. But exploring that this fourth chakra has an immense, immense amount of healing energy. And when we're balanced there, we really, truly have such an amazing opportunity to heal, to heal ourselves, to help others heal, and, and to really heal the world. And, and we have a lot of that going on right now where there's a lot of places that need healing. But you've got to start here with yourself first. So, you know, uh, ask yourself, does life handle me or do I handle my life? Um, that tells you whether or not you might be out of balance there. So empower yourself through surrendering to that. Just surrendering to it. Having that emotional energy, that love, as the central power point and true motivator in your body, your mind, and your spirit. That's that fourth chakra. So then we go up into this fifth chakra, okay, the throat chakra. It's a tricky one. It's very tricky. Here you're going to surrender personal will to divine will, okay? It's finding your authentic voice. But on, with that spiritual twist, that that authentic voice is actually surrendered to the higher power. Whatever that higher power is for you, God, great spirit, source, divine energy, love, whatever it is that that thing that's bigger than you, that's part of your creation, that part of what you're a part of, okay, that you surrender to that, you surrender your voice this is so much power right here also. Everything from the first, second, third, fourth chakra gets voice here, gets action into the world. And so when we surrender that power to uh, divine purpose, we have the opportunity to be an instrument, to be an instrument that affects the world by giving voice to the divine. So we surrender blame here. We surrender our shame here. We surrender when we've been quiet at the wrong times and when we've spoken out of turn. This all affects here. Um, we embrace integrity. This is speaking truth. This is where that agreement is really powerful. We 
choose to live by a moral compass, and this is where we practice it. Do our words offer loving comfort or even constructive criticism, but in a place that comes from the heart chakra, not from the ego? Uh, can we empower others with this instrument? That's really surrendering to that divine will. Your every choice, thought, and feeling has biological, environmental, social, personal, global consequences. That's the power here. And actions motivated by personal will that trusts that divine authority kind of gives, uh, gives you that most solid power. Okay, so that is, you know, the importance of this fifth chakra. And we move up to the sixth, our third eye, right here. Our intuition, the wisdom of the ancestors, the wisdom that we know everything we already need to know. It's a matter of remembering. It's a matter of uncovering. It's a matter of taking away all these filters and films that we see everything through right here. So this is our intuitive wisdom. And this is the seed of where we co-create from. This is where we vision, all right? So it brings, it brings armor with it often. So sometimes we have to disarm ourselves in order to let this third eye open up, it's opening the space, disarming, bringing light into the shadows so that our fear doesn't govern this. Okay. Um, trusting yourself, trusting that you are connected and that that wisdom can come through clearly. Okay, so that's sixth chakra. And then uh, seventh chakra, sacred truth. And that we talked about last week, sacred truth, living in the present moment right here. This is what we have right now the present moment, and that this present moment, when we're present with it, unveils all that is divine. All that is divine and keeps us connected through the seventh chakra opening up. Remember we talked about uh, the thousand petal lotus on top. Uh, we talked about it being uh, a drop in the ocean that we're like one drop in the ocean, but we're part of that whole. So opening that up, having the sky mind. Yeah. So achieving that personal relationship with the, the divine happens in that seventh chakra. It's humbling and empowering at the same time. All physical, psychological, and emotional illusions of fear need to be removed to keep this open. And so we let go of the past, we try not to anticipate the future, and we live in the present with the divine. And we stay whole, and we stay empowered, and this is where the greatest potential lies, so that our sixth chakra vision has a place to manifest, manifest in its highest vibration. So this is, uh, this is very powerful. All of these chakras together reflect that we store our experiences in our bodies. In. It, is, it is within us. It's measurable energy. Okay, so energetically, it is in our tissues. It is in our cells. And so we kind of need to uh, keep custody of that. And as much as we're responsible for it, it also gives us a way to really work with things on a very deep level in our bodies, in our energy bodies, in our physical bodies. And the importance of staying connected this way um, becomes a daily, a daily practice, a daily intention, staying awakened. So letting go of worry. Letting all the fear fade away daily. And when we're in that space, we can remember that love heals, 
that the center of our heart spaces can envelop everything. That when we have a daily practice that includes silence, that slows us down, that helps us remain awakened and alert and open and present. And when we're there, we are in spirit. We are aligned with spirit. And that's how we move into the world. That's how we move into our daily lives. That's the importance of having that daily practice to set ourselves up to move forward in presence in everything that we do, in every place that we are. <clears throat> and Thich Nhat Hanh said spiritual practice is not just sitting in meditation. Practice is looking, thinking, touching, drinking, eating, and talking. Every act, every breath, and every step can be practiced and help us become more ourselves. And so that becoming more ourselves is the importance in searching through these chakras, right? Because we're pulling away all the films that life and other people have taught us in response to that so that we can really get to the heart of who we are. And we become more ourselves when we let all that fall away. And that reminds us that we are truly divine love, truly a reflection of the creator, of great spirit, and part of the one. And it goes back to the beginning, it goes back to that root chakra of knowing that we are all one. So today, there's a need to honor and celebrate this seeking divine connection that each of you comes here to do, okay? So we kind of rake ourselves through the coals sometimes. We try to figure it all out. And today, we're here to celebrate. And that can't be missed. We're here to celebrate the fact that each of us seeks to stay awakened. Each of us actually strives to uncover our own divine selves that we're always reaching higher through healing. That is a courageous act. That is a courageous act of divine love. And so with every day that you bring that practice up, for every Sunday or any other day that you join a video of ours or anybody else's that helps you seek being a better you, that is all honorable. So give yourself a moment to just sit here and say, you know what? Every time I do that, I build my self-love. I build my worthiness. I let go more and cut away the cords of those things that keep me from being a co-collaborative creator with the divine. I keep affirming this to myself. And as long as you keep doing that, you're riding that edge, riding the edge of staying awake. And that's what we're all looking to do. That's what brings us together here at Angel's Landing. So, whew, open your eyes, see that. Celebrate the space that you gain every time you do it. Hmm. Devotion to the light does not absolve our darkness. So, we must urgently practice this awakened mind that we're feeling right now and this open heart space. Keep bringing that, keep bringing that. All right. <clears throat> so as we celebrate, as we bring all this up in our bodies, many of you, many of you are struggling with something. And what I want to do in our meditation today is help you learn how to, um, how to use your chakra system to work with something that you're struggling with, okay? And this is the takeaway. So you can walk away from this chakra study, the chakra healing, and know how to apply it on a daily basis besides just the uh, moving it from here to here and doing the chanting. 
I'm going to walk you through a meditation today that helps use all seven chakras. And you can either use it with a topic that's difficult for you to think about or work through or um, a particular situation that's really um, feels insurmountable in your life right now. So that's what we're going to do with our meditation today. Okay. So <clears throat> get comfortable. Feel your butt in the chair, wherever you are. Get your feet on the ground. Okay. And wherever you are, feel your feet and the energy extend through and past your feet until you're connected to Mother Earth. Hmm. Now, draw your awareness into your breath. And just to honor and recognize these seven energy centers in your body. Open your heart chakra and just kind of feel the love you have for understanding and learning this right now. For having the opportunity you get to recognize something in your life that's challenging and bring it into this space right now. So start by having a vision identifying something that is challenging to you. And actually, I'm, I'm going to turn off my video, but not my audio, because I think it's really important that everybody just really feel inside themselves right now. No distractions. So close your eyes and watch your breath. your breath and now bring to mind whatever it is your topic or situation might be. Notice how that thought changes your breath. Notice where in your body you may be feeling any kind of discomfort, maybe some restrictions, pain. Keep breathing calmly, deeply. Stay with the thought. Okay, stay with it. And I want you to dive into that mental picture of your challenge, of your topic, of whatever it is that you want to draw more healing to. Dive into that mental picture. Really see it, feel it, know it. Be courageous enough, brave enough to just let it be there with you, as hard as it might be right now. And now see it as a cloud in your sky mind. Okay, remember that you are the sky and it's a cloud. So see it as the cloud. Is it a storm cloud? Is it lighter? Is it a type of cloud? Just see it all as a cloud. It might even have a color. But recognize that you are the sky, not the cloud. So I want you to bring your awareness to your root chakra. <clears throat> Back down into your pelvic region. Relax the muscles in your pelvis. Relax your, all around your genitalia. Just let everything relax. Breathe into it and open the energy to the earth there. Feel that connection we already started. See your cloud that you've identified and put it inside of that first chakra space, inside your pelvis, okay? Let it resonate there and set the intention to transform it. Say to yourself or aloud, there is enough time money, trust, love, understanding 
to heal my difficulty with this situation or topic. And breathe that thought. There's enough time, money, trust, love, and understanding to heal my difficulty with this situation or topic. Now envision this with a sense of abundance and resolution. Feel that this is already true, that it has happened. You should not feel any pressure to make it happen. Just ease your way into feeling that it's already true. And if you do this at a later time for yourself, stay here until it feels better. We're just gonna keep moving right now. So now bring your awareness to your navel area. Breathe into your belly. Soften your muscles there and shift your cloud up into the second chakra. Surround it with a sea of fluidity and flexibility. Say to yourself here, I am open to change. See yourself enjoying the flow of conversation about this topic or situation. Seeing everyone involved, finding a place of flexibility in the situation. Being open to changing opinions and positions. Adapting effortlessly to the currents of energy that your vision carries right now. Find comfort and ease within this space, within this cloud transformed by openness and possibility. Breathe in that openness and possibility. And now with your next in breath, with your awareness, lift that cloud into your solar plexus area. Breathing in, feel it expand, feel it relax. Feel the center of your body's power. See your cloud existing inside of that third solar plexus chakra. Now infuse it with that energy and power that the third chakra has. Infusing it with your superpowers, saying to yourself, I have all the energy I need to work with this in a healthy, centered way. I have all the energy I need streaming through me from source. Everything that I need to work with this in a healthy and centered way. Now see yourself and any people related in your image. See them feeling alive, feeling on purpose, making correct choices, aligning with purpose and divine power. See them feeling innovative, responsible. See any authority you might have simply being respected. Your power, your energy, being respected. Be then and exhale into the ease of this feeling. Now lift your in your cloud into your heart space. Opening your chest, relaxing the muscles that surround your heart. And set the intention for your heart to be open to receive. That's an important intention because sometimes when we're looking at challenges and difficult situations, our heart wants to close up. This is the time for that authentic, authentic connection, that authentic truth. Let it be open and acknowledge that space of how you're feeling. Let everything relax around it. Now see the situation inside of your heart chakra. Surround it and everyone connected with love and acceptance. Just as is, with love and acceptance. Say to yourself, I am ready to create a common ground. Be careful not to dwell on, you know, success or failures, 
of people, no petty antagonisms. Don't make the cloud more stormy or bigger or thicker. Just simply appreciate what everyone associated with this has done so far. Recognizing and honoring and trusting that each of us is doing the best we can do with what we have in any given moment. Allow yourself to see with your heart space how much happier everyone is when they feel acknowledged, how much more motivated they are toward positive results. Feel the transformation by love and acceptance here. That fourth chakra, love and acceptance, transforms everything. And so now bring your awareness up to your throat, relaxing your jaw, your neck, your voice, letting anything that no longer serves you fall away. See your cloud inside of this space, inside of this fifth chakra, allowing everyone and everything in your vision to express their truth in a creative and authentic way. Sometimes we need creativity and humor to transform a situation. Sometimes we need truth and empowerment to transform a situation. These are all the gifts of the fifth chakra. So say, I enjoy sharing my creative ideas and hearing others express theirs. I recognize the power of my voice and I align it with my moral compass. You may need to see the comical side of a situation or topic, like exaggerate the image if you need to in your mind. Make it silly, even goofy if you need to. Just release the attachment to the seriousness because often that seriousness is the armor of fear. So sometimes, you know, a visual might even be, uh, if it's appropriate, like attaching helium balloons to everybody and seeing them all kind of floating upward, lifting everyone into the air, like, you know, the scene from Mary Poppins. Transforming your cloud with laughter and creative expression. Or um, you may need to empower everyone including yourself with that authentic truth and the ability to express it authentically, genuinely for the highest good. Okay. So whatever it is, feel this transformation happening. Now we're going to travel up to that third eye, the window to the soul. Invite your third eye to open to see everything in your clouds that need to be seen. Seeing everything that needs to be seen. Feel that third eye opening. It, help, it moves your awareness to the back of your head, taking it all in through your periphery with obje objectivity. Okay, so like see all that very objectively as the observer. And see your cloud sitting in the middle of that six chakra space, that blue light. Envision everyone in the scene feeling connected, integrated through their minds, their bodies, and their spirits with each other. You can say to yourself, I act to realize my vision with intention and purpose. I am clear in my action and make the right choices aligned with the highest good. I act to realize my vision with intention and purpose. I am clear in my action and make the right choices that are aligned with the highest good. So now see that bigger picture. See you are no longer bogged down by details or identifying with criticism or any of the shadow spaces. It's all brought to light. You are witnessing now the situation and topic but you're not lost in it, you're seeing it. You experience being the sky for your cloud. You have achieved this balance between 
understanding the context of it and listening to your intuitive guidance of the third eye. So feel the density of that cloud lighten. See it lighten because you aren't in the middle of it. And with that, we lift ourselves up to the seventh chakra, the crown chakra, relaxing the muscles of your scalp, asking the chakra to open, giving it permission, asking it, bringing in the guides and ancestors if need be to help strengthen that connection. Like a cup waiting to be filled. Just picture that thousand petal lotus opening up, thirsty to be filled. See this newly transformed vision existing as pure potential inside of that crown chakra, at the center of that lotus. Say, I am ready to receive what I need to heal this situation. This is where we acknowledge that we are those receptacles, that we bring in the light, that we are connected and we can't do it alone, that we need the connection to our divine source to make this type of healing transformation happen. See yourself linked with everyone in your image at a soul level, your spirits all connecting. You all have a role to play in the situation and you all know exactly what needs to be done in the highest good to move forward now. See all of you surrendering your ego to your highest purpose, to your greatest purpose, seeing that harmony come together. You become one spirit. You respect each other. All is well. It's all connected. Now release this from the top of your head out into the universe, knowing that it's already been accomplished, fully accomplished. Now breathe back into this moment, coming back into your body, feeling your skin, smelling, tasting, feeling, hearing, right back into this moment with the feeling of certainty and success as you awaken into this present moment here, right here in our sacred circle. And breathe and open your eyes and join me again. Mm. Namaste to ourselves, each and every one of us. For the work that you're doing for yourself. Namaste for holding this space for each other. Some of us have a lot heavier cloud than others do right now. And when we come together like this, we're really holding the sacred space for all of us to do this work. And collectively, we are much more powerful at creating that space for people who uh, are exhausted and weak and don't feel like they have that. We give them that strength and energy because we are all one. So, namaste to our ancestors and our guides who help that release in the seventh chakra especially. And for those who guard the circle so that may, we may do this deeper healing work. So this meditation can be used with challenges as well as practice. You can set every day to this. You can get really good at moving through these systems very quickly, giving yourself the message in each one. And you can set your intent for the whole day that way. Instead of it being a challenge or a topic, but, well, the topic is your day. What's your day going to look like? What needs to unfold? If you're waking up and you're saying, oh, we have too much to do already, well, then sit down and take, you know, the five to 15 minutes that it's going to take you to do this kind of alignment work so that you can actually walk into a day and not feel drugged by it. 
that happens for me a lot. And this is a great way to kind of recenter what your intention is and live in a sacred, awake manner. Okay. So <clears throat> with the gratitude of holding that space, I invite you to close your eyes and really tune into um, the words of Laurie and John's next song. This meditation song can really help you cap off what this meditation has been. I'm going to try to find some more light here. It's getting dark. I think we're getting your storm. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Larry, Lori and John. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so hopefully we're all feeling more uplifted. We're feeling empowered. We know how this chakra system can work to our advantage in our spiritual quests. And we know how we can apply every day a way to become more connected, deeper, and higher in ourselves. So from that space and in our sacred circle, I ask you all to call forth any intentions you have for others. You can say them aloud or in the space of your own heart. Okay. For all the people, all the intentions, all the pain, all the love that's needed out there. Call those forth in your heart. Hold them in your hands in front of you as we bless. May you find the sacred space always. Trust your heart, your mind, your intuition, your inner knowing, the senses of your body, the blessings of your spirit. May you find the trust yourself to listen and hear. May you have the strength of eagle's wings to fly high, the faith and courage to new heights, to see with the sky mind all the clouds passing by, 
and the wisdom of the ancestors to carry you there so that you may always enter your sacred space in love beyond your fears and that you may walk sacred with the passing of each day. Aho. Laurie and John. We have one announcement. You're all invited to a Monday morning meditation with Don Woodring at 11 o'clock. The information for contacting Don is on our website. And we invite you to visit our website and subscribe to email, especially if you would like to gather, us, gather with us in a fellowship after this service. Thank you for being with us today. You added so much to our sacred circle. And we hope to see you next week. Have a beautiful week till then. Goodbye.